everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Jet Set Insider. My name is Murgatroyd. Oh, you did that the other day. You referred to yourself in the first, third person, like Cher. Just Murgatroyd. You're just Murgatroyd. <laughs> just Murgatroyd. And this lovely lady to my right is the lovely and talented Kimberly Ann Murgatroyd. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. What are my talents? <laughs> Lots of talents. Nice. Lots of talents, baby. We've got a very, very exciting show. But before we get into the show... Oh, God. Before we get into the show, if you look... For those of you that are on video and you look at my forehead, What's... what do you notice? Nothing. Oh. No movement. Nothing. <laughs> How did that happen? Nothing. How... I woke up the other morning... And all of the wrinkles We're around gone? my eyes, the crow's feet, and the forehead just disappeared. Really? I don't know what happened. I don't know how it Was happened. Was it the 700 needles that got shoved into your forehead? Oh, you mean the Botox? The Botox? He got Botox? You're so vain. Is I that how it goes? I bet you think, think this song podcast is, is about <clears throat> you. Yes, I did. Uh, yeah. I did Botox. I did. So you nice and ironed for the new year. Nice and ironed for the new year. You know, sometimes you hit a point in your life where the wrinkles. Well, how old are you first? Because these people, they don't know how old you are. Twenty-seven. Add twenty years to that, kids. Forty-seven, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Forty-seven. So year. that means you were born around the time of Lincoln. Let's talk Do you about remember what's when going- Demi asked my mother if she was at the Boston Tea Party? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Like the things kids say. Hey, Meme, were you at the Boston Tea Party? So as we're as we're wrapping up this 2013 year, we thought let's do a little New Year's Eve themed podcast. Yeah. So, honey, tell them what we got going. In the first segment, we're going to show you everything we love about Rio and make you just want to go. In our second segment, Rob lets loose on his newest pet peeve and then allows the restaurant to make up for it. In our third segment is the I didn't have to wiggle it with Whitey segment. (laughs) (laughs) Eh, Yes, Darren, you are in the podcast. And in our fourth segment, some things, this is our favorite, some things just don't translate. And we've got a good one there. All right. So, so here, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. And then to close out, we're going to do a blooper reel. So if you guys. Of all the mistakes that you do. Of all the mistakes yeah. that, you, that I do throughout the last year that you guys. All have. right. So let's, let's go to um, one of our favorite places on earth in that regard is Rio at New yeah. Year's Eve. And we've done this one three times. Mm-hmm. So back when we first went in 05, and actually that was kind of the instigator to start Jet Set Life. Uh, was that trip to Rio because remember we went and it was like we got stuck on yeah. concierge recommendations uh, and it was Shoot. it was a great trip but it wasn't we didn't know where to go we didn't know where to go and so that's how we actually began Jet Set Life because we said there's got to be a better way to know where to go um, since then do you remember New Year's then we were up on the um, top floor of at the time it was called the Rio International and now it's the Porto Bay yep um Watching the whole thing, watching the New Year's, the the fireworks and everything, and this big, long Copacabana beach filled with people, we went down to the beach, and it wasn't super crowded, right? It was like they had a little stage set up that I would kind of say it looked more like a card table, you know, with like local artists on it, and you throw the the gladiolas into the ocean, and you make your wish for the New Year. It was really (laughs) very calm, I would say. It was busy, but it was not... What it wasn't... we experienced this past year. This past year, what did they have? 3.5 million people I, on was, Copacabana? It was it was a record. It was, it was, it was an insane number. Ridiculous. I don't think it was two and I don't think it was four. Three sounds right. Yeah, three point, I think it was 3.5 yeah. or something. It was getting through the crowds was like... It was, I, I'll be honest with you. It kind of freaked me out. If you're was, slightly, cla- if you're slightly claustrophobic as, as I am and have becoming um, worse as I got older... Um, you really should think twice about New Year's Eve in Rio. As amazing uh, as it streets, is, on the, streets, on the streets, on the streets, there's like, other things you can do that you're not. Yeah, on the you, streets. you don't. You're not living in a telephone. The problem bus. is you can't take a taxi. So uh, to these places because all the streets are closed down and everybody's walking. So we were staying on Ipanema and we were going to the same hotel we went stayed at the first year, the Porto Bay. Uh, it's now called the Porto Bay. 
to use their rooftop, really, is what we wanted. Yeah. Because it has the best Which vantage point in all of they, Rio. They whore themselves out. They'll, yeah. they'll let you buy a rooftop pass. Yeah, they will let you buy a rooftop <clears throat> pass. So we had to walk from Ipanema to basically past Copacabana Palace mm-hmm. um, to this other hotel. And they created this massive stage with this LED lighting. So like card table, no more. And I mean, last two years ago, they had David Guetta perform. They have big artists perform. So they have this massive stage. But then they made this weird like doorway. And I don't know who thought it was good to take a wide beach and make everybody go through a doorway this wide. And that's really what happened. That's where the panic started because it was like a funnel pushing you through. Could not, you just couldn't get through it. And so we, we, it was us and our friends, the Whiteys, and uh, trying to just get to this hotel. So once we got there, it was all great. Yeah, but so here's the good and, news. And then when we, you get through the gauntlet yeah. and you get up to the top of whatever rooftop you it's decide stunning. to go on. And, and I strong, we've looked at a lot of them. I strongly recommend this particular yeah, place. Yeah, the Porto Bay. <clears throat> the Porto Bay, yeah. When you look down... It's um, it's one of those. Well, let's um, show them real quick the firework video so they can see that vantage point. Right. You want to check, check this out. So, so that's the view. So when you look at that and you see this, you know, all the sparkling of the lights going it, it's off. Really, the it's really it's it's magical. And so, now it's set to music. I mean, Rio has really come a long way. Since we went in 2005, now I guess that's eight years. It does. I have to tell you, it, it, when I first went, it felt very third worldy to me, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, and it didn't feel that way this time. Yeah. No. Um, are you comfortable? Yeah, I'm trying to get an angle. I'm not happy with the angle. I don't know what it is. Is it the angle of your head, or is it your comfort on the chair? It's what probably you... no. I'm good now. Okay. okay. Good. Thank yeah. God. I'm Jesus. good. Jesus, you're like a fidgety six year old. Tell him the. Tell him about the walk when we were walking, like at these. You know, the walk to like. Um, Oh, hold on. Let's pause that one second. Okay. I, I, I was doing the yeah. potty when I saw the walk, too. Yeah. I was doing the potty. Okay. Okay. Three, two, so, one. So then, after the fireworks are done, we decide to take the back road and not the main Copacabana Avenue Atlantica strip. Whoever had that um, idea was genius because it was holla. so smart. Yeah. So we took the back road, like two streets back. Much less crowded. You can walk down the street. It was fine. It was probably a little sketchier, but Mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Oh, this is terrible. (laughs) Look at the light. This is, this is live TV. No, I'm good. Live TV. No, I'm not good. It's coming. No, I'm good. Okay, I'm good. Your nose feel itchy? Yeah. Yeah. Like right up here. Do you feel like this pressure building inside of you? It's going to come out, but when it does, it does. So we... is Is it making it hard for you to think? No. Concentrate? No, but you are. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so we walked all the way back uh, on the back road back to the Fasano and did the New Year's party at the Fasano. Look at you right now. <laughs> what? Look at you right now. I'm listening. I'm, I'm intensely, I'm intensely listening to My your story. My God. God, I'm, I'm in the, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. Okay. I'm in it. Go okay. ahead. So we were walking, we walked all the way back and went to the Fasano, which was doing a rooftop party of their own. Mm-hmm. And the Fasano, for anybody that cares, is the best hotel in Rio. I get it. The Copacabana Palace, blah, 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 blah. If you're 60 and you have money and you don't really like a party, go to the Copacabana Palace. If you um, are younger, hip, or older and hip, it doesn't matter, go to the Fasano. Think like, for Copacabana Palace, think... Palm Beach. Yeah, like, like think like wooded, like smoking room, wooded, mahogany walls, yeah. butlers, and not butlers, like like people in uniforms with weird hats. Yeah, like it's you not, know it's, at every corner. It's luxury, but it's not. It's hip. over. The, it's over the top luxury, but it's not hip. Not that like, there's anything wrong with it. If that's your if that's your vibe, that's your vibe. But if you want something hip, trendy, go to the Fasano. Um, there's been a rash of celebrities staying at the Fasano, Lady Gaga, Jay Z and It's a really Kim Ye, it, it's just and all if of you're that. in Rio it's the only place to stay. And for New Year's it's, let's I'm just gonna put it out there. Yeah. Like I ain't I'm not trying to impress you, but I'm gonna tell you you are gonna pay yeah. to be in that hotel yeah. for that week. Yeah, and but they it's, don't give a shit. You're paying it. It's stupid expensive, but it's um also incredibly worth it. So that all being said 
the pool party there that night on New Year's <clears> Eve <throat> was amazing. So we went up to great, the pool. Great DJ, too. It was, you know, you pay the ticket to get in, um, but it's unlimited champagne and apparently a ton of salad. It was, the, it was the weirdest thing. <laughs> like, so it's, you know, you, everything in Rio is late. So you get up, you know, you get up to the rooftop, at, you know, I guess 11 or no, 12. No, 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 no. We were coming back. This is after oh, this the was fireworks. After, oh, That's, this was after the fireworks. That's Stay right. No, you're right. We so got it was there. like, by the time we this got there, it was probably like two or three, right? Three in the morning by the time we got there. So then like. But it was like five or six. They were coming around with food because people were still hungry. And the guy comes over at six in the morning and says, would you like some salad? (laughs) And I said, and and it wasn't even like, it wasn't like a loss in the translation thing. Like he had a a plate of it. A platter of individual salads. And he was handing out salad at like six in the morning. So Because that's what you want after a night of partying. Like A, when was the last time that the sun came back around? A, when was the last time at New Year's you wanted salad after your dinner? And, (laughs) And two... When was it that you were partying and salad said, sunrise. I need some salad? And three, <laughs> when was it when you watched the sun come up and you're like, you know, I'm actually jonesing for a little salad right now. It made but no sense. But he came around two or three times salad. offering salad. Salad. <laughs> and so it was really funny, but we actually did end up eating the salad, which is the irony of the whole thing. And then they came out with skewers with fruit on it, which was also kind of odd, but interesting. I think really what happened was people were hungry and they was were asking like, for food. And so like they were frozen, going... Was no. that like frozen popsicles too? I think they also had fudgesicles or something. <laughs> it was the it was weirdest. Like, it was like they raided the kitchen because the, the drunk people were hungry. <laughs> Somebody and they were went, like, Make fudgesicles, salad. <laughs> salads. We got salad. And we fudgesicles. Have fudge. And fruit. <laughs> and, and we'll give them fruit. Yeah. That's what they want. So, but it was other than, <laughs> other than that and including that, it was a really great party um, rooftop there. So. All right, so the, so so the next... A, so, oh, you so want... So here, yeah. Do you I have a video of that? I, no, I just have a compilation video oh. of what it your experience is like um, New Year's week in Rio de Janeiro. One of the most beautiful cities in the world, and there's no better way to see it than from the air. So the next day, we go off, and this is I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my pet peeve. So the next day we go off and we go to have lunch, okay? And you pick out the wine, and I am no wine snob at all. I don't know the difference, honestly. I know I like Malbec and Pinot Noir, and that's that's about it. But if it came it. from Trader Joe's or whatever, it I don't, I don't, we I don't really know, know the difference. I don't know the difference. I know if I taste something and it sucks, I'm like I don't like it, and if it's you know like ridiculously expensive, I can never tell that it's any better than anything yeah. else. But I'm a big guy with experience. I like to have an experience of something. You know what I mean? Like if you're sitting down and you take a little glass of wine, there's a there's an experience where the guy... Like the takes- one time when we were in um, Italy, when we were in Florence, and the guy uncorked <clears throat> the wine, put it in the decanter, I don't know what, warmed it. Warmed I'm not it. sure. And he then it. And then took and then like decanted it. It was like, it was like an event. And then poured in the wine, took a sip, decided he didn't like it. And the waiter took the sip, decided he didn't like it, and threw it out. What's and gra- then what, was great about, what was great about that experience Is that the was... waiter was really handsome. Just kidding. 
Not we're actually really. going to see him. I, know, I think the so reason excited. why we're going to Rome is so my wife can see this waiter. No, we're actually taking a one day. trip We're actually to taking Florence. a one day trip to Florence too, because it wasn't. And we Rome, say he's a Florence. waiter. He's actually the restaurant owner, but and yeah. and he happens to be a prince. Yeah, I know, honey. He's Did you prince. know he's a real prince? Yes, I. Do you know he's on our wall? Yes. Me and him. Yeah. yeah. Well, you should probably take a little yeah. video. Oh, he's right there. Where? It's oh, it's over there. Yeah. So oh, anyway. he's in the corner. Yeah, he's in the corner. Um. So what was great about that experience was that the guy the guy knows his shit when it comes to wine because he has a winery. So he knows Oh, he's a prince with a winery and a restaurant. <laughs> he knows he knows if the wine is good or not. But that's so he okay, likes the experience. So that's on the that's on the one end of the extreme. The other end of the extreme is let me take a bottle of wine with a screw cap, uncap it, and then pour it for you. <laughs> I don't know about you, and you can email, write in, smoke signals, you can do all your social media, and tell us if it bothers you, if you're having a glass of wine, if the waiter goes and with a pours. screw cap and then pours it like he's doing a Michelob, okay? <laughs> Like well, we the, have the video. Let's show the video. This is Rob's pet peeve at the restaurant with the screw top. <laughs> Honey, what do you not like? Uh, screw caps. Why? Screw caps up. Um, I think wine companies should say screw you to screw caps, in my personal opinion. Darren, because I think it probably costs infinitely less money to have a, have a screw cap. Yes. Of course, it does take away from the authenticity and the uh, proper caliber of the wine, but... You agree, right? You concur? Yeah, I'm going to tell Even you Even if it's a good wine, because they now have good wines with screw caps. Look, 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 look. Get, get the screw cap. Watch it take it off. It's sexy, right? Don't you just part night? Now you're going to taste it. <laughs> I, I, I don't even, I don't even want it. Like, I feel silly. You, That's like having wine I in the box. I feel silly swishing. Do you smell the cap? <laughs> Absolutely. Smell the cap and taste the wine. I think you should decant that, actually. Oh my God. Are you with me here? How about screw you to the to the screw cap? Screw you to the screw cap. I mean, there's just something that's just not right about it. But they made it. up but for it. They what? made up for it. How? With the dessert. Well, that's what I was just about to get that's into. That's how they made up however, for it. However, however, what was right chocolate mousse on a spoon I like chocolate I'm not like my wife my wife would leave me for, for chocolate, chocolate. Mm -hmm. I'm not now if all that, about if that the restaurant chocolate. owner owned a winery and like a chocolate company you'd be let me let me saying. show you let me show you what I'm talking about here this was chocolate mousse on the spoon look at this thing <laughs> They come over with the bowl and they just scoop out a giant thing. It was, and by the way, and it was ridiculous. Like I hate when I watch TV shows and the president's like, "Mmm, that's good," and it's you're like, like food "Okay, porn. yeah, like I get it. You no, like it." This was ridiculous. This was ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what the hell's in this chocolate mousse, but it was. I do. I made one the other damn day. Damn good. Now on the other end of the spectrum, if you have a cap that doesn't open, it's a pain in the ass. Not a, but, not a, yeah, the cap what, with the screw cap. But what? What if you're whitey? What if you're whitey? And you're trying to open a bottle. And this is it. Whitey is a very sophisticated world <laughs> traveler guy. He's been around the world in 80 days or something. I don't know what the hell he did. <laughs> what did he do? He went around the he world. Backpacked, and lived honey. Backpack. Whatever he did, he's been everywhere. Yeah. Okay. And now he's rich. He's successful. He does it in style. So he's a sophisticated guy. So this was New Year's Eve afternoon, I think. At the pool. At the pool at the Fasano. And we had a couple of bottles of champagne that the hotel gifts you. Uh, here's like, how I'd they like, leave it in your room. Here's how I'd like to do this. I'd like to first show you a still shot. <laughs> okay, just a still shot and then we'll go back to the okay. story. Here's a still shot of Whitey's expression. Just, 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 just show, yeah, just show. Good, right? Let's go to video number. Second bottle of champagne. Two. Okay. okay. All right. So, first of all, that face is gorgeous. And I, I slow mode using my, my right arrow and left arrow. To get it perfect. If you, there's, if you scroll left and hit three buttons, you're going to get equally as good shots. Yeah. 
And if you scroll right, you're going to get this beautiful morphing of the face. But that one was that the was best. That was good. Okay, so that's him opening the champagne. Now, let's go to the video. The two videos. This happened twice. Okay, so let's show him video number one. Hold them already. I told them what the... All right, don't talk about it. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> that didn't even like... I got it. I didn't it's have to wiggle it. It's still in here. Look, it's still in here. It's oh. still in the corner. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> here. Again, second time. Second time, right? Not even, like, you could, that time it didn't scare you. you Those corks could not stay in the bottle. They completely, they left the both bottle of them, in perfect form. In the, in the little thing that goes on top of the wine, on uh, the champagne. Oh, you know what? Both I, of them. I have, I have something. Why don't they put um, screw caps on champagne? Probably because of the fizziness. The fizziness. Yeah. Okay. So, so, you know, when you're traveling around, you sometimes come across things that don't translate. Like the salad, it didn't translate way, so well. Can I just say something real quick? Yeah. Sometimes we do the, this just didn't translate. And then people email me and say, no, that's how they say it there. No we, we shit. Know, we know that's how they say it. Like, what was the one um, molester? It was like don't don't don't, don't, don't molest, molest the, the bamboo. bamboo, and I was like, that's. They're like, oh no, no, that's the word. No, that's for, the word for we touching. We get it. We Molesting know. is touching. That's why but we it's say funny molesting. In but the we English. don't use it in that way. Yeah, so it's a joke. It's a joke. So there's no reason. No to write reason in. to be. I know. I get we'll it. We'll tell you when to write in. But this one doesn't translate. And if if you're if you speak Portuguese. And you can tell me the translation of the word potty and why that makes it okay. I would well, love to actually let, we have hear to sh that. Let's, sh let's show you the video so you know what the hell we're talking about. Let's look at this video. Guys? Yeah. Here's the question. Yep. Do you want to go to the potty? Oh, this is the video. The potty? I, need, I need to go to the potty. Actually. You mean like, like a pee-pee, like a poo-poo? Maybe. Or you mean like a cocktail because there's two different versions. Which one do you want to know? I do need to go potty before. Okay, well, let's go potty. All right, let's go potty. go potty. Okay. Take it, Rob. All right, this falls into our some things just don't translate. So we're on the Avenue Atlantica, the main drag in uh, Ipanema in uh, Rio. And they have these little beach bars that sell like caipirinhas and stuff like that, little cocktails. And the name of this one is Potty. <laughs> Somehow, there wasn't a lot of thought gone into the translation of this one. So you can see clearly coming down the road, you're like, which is, by the way, it's Let's amazing. Get a it's amazing. You're driving, you're yeah. walking down the beach in Rio. You know, you got the ocean to your right, and you got all these little huts. shacks, there, these little huts. You can get fresh juices. You can get cocktails, snacks. Ca caipirinha. But who the hell wants to get a drink at the potty? You want a potty? No. You want to go to the potty? I don't think so. But oh, you know, Gia just stuck her head up. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what we, that's what we tell when she's gonna go potty. Um, so. I, this this may be a little bit hard for Kim, but at, at the end of the year, um, or at the end of our trip, we always have some bloopers. Um, oh. I make very few mistakes. Kim makes most of the mistakes on our video, and you'll be able to see here. We know you guys love bloopers, so to send you out on 2013, we are going to do it in a blooper reel of all of our videos. I'm not ready that to say goodbye. Missed. Let's show them no, the video, and, and then so we're going to come back. No, we're going to show them the video, and then we're going to come no, back. No, we're not. Just one more second. Let's watch the video. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna take that testicle. It's not a testicle. You don't know it's a boob. Just walk a couple of blocks in. So now, when you've had too many beaches, is it on? So when you've had too many chi one where it's on, like the little circles there. Okay. Perinias, and you just want to chill. Heddle, heddle. Wow. Three. Next move we're going to do is three, two, and five tricep. Let's check it out. I probably shouldn't say let's check it out, right? And the problem is you're mouthing it when I do it, so it's freaking me out. Yeah. <laughs> you're trying to make sure I get it right? <laughs> yeah. Work hard, play hard, work hard, play hard. We work hard, play hard. So 
glad I got that on video. <laughs> Rob. Huh? Just the camera's on. Yeah. Rob? Yes. Camera. Hi. Huh? Say hello. Hello. You're not so good at this today. Yeah, where'd your personality go? Well, I don't know what we're doing. You gotta give me a direction. You're walking upstairs. That's what I was doing. The most popular bar in town is Scarpa, which I've learned. The word Scarpa comes from the Greek word Scarpalimu, which means to get, to get fucked up. Of the three beaches, the Copacabana is definitely the most crowded. Oh, wait a minute. What was it? Of the three beaches, the Copacabana is the longest stretch of sand. Say that stretch of sand three times. Of the three beaches, the Copacabana is... Hold on. Of the three beaches, the Copacabana... Okay, ready? Three, two, one. New Year's Eve on three, two, one. See that beautiful gift of bloopers that we gave you? Do you like the end there where I have to tell him where we are and where to sign off for? <laughs> we're on the Copacabana. We're in Rio. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So. Because anybody. You had an amazing amount of entertainment value there, right? Right? Again. All those bloopers Can't that Kim. just let them go? All those bloopers that Kim makes, those mistakes, the funny, the funny whitey videos, all these things. What do we ask for? Do we come to your house, knock on your door, and go. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Uh, some things you just can't plan. Do we come to your house, knock on your door, and do we say to you, give me a nickel, give me a dollar, give me ten dollars? No, we don't ask for anything. We don't ask for that is the cutest dog ever. We don't ask for anything. <laughs> we don't ask for anything. What do we ask? Just sniff the mic. We ask that you go to iTunes, you type in Jet Set Insider, you come up to a comment, you leave a comment. You leave a comment. You say, Gia is the cutest little puppy in the world. That's all we have for you today, ladies and Bye. germs. Have a wonderful, Gia, wonderful 2013. She's apparently tired. Yeah, she's apparently tired. And listen, Happy I'm gonna, New Year. Before, you, before we go, one last oh thing. Oh my God. Really, one last thing. Let them go. They want to go to their parties. We have a tradition every year in the Murgatroyd mm. family. And this is important. The tradition we have is to not set a New Year's resolution or to not set a goal. And if you want to set a resolution or goal, go ahead. But include, at least include this in your 2013. Decide what you are going to leave behind. Decide the story that you're telling yourself over and over again about how you can't do something. Or decide about the thing that you just keep complaining about. I gotta go every day to this office and or I hate this cubicle. Or the thing that or, happened to you or that the, you or the, or the thing that you just don't let go. Whatever it is that's getting in your way of going from where you are to where you want to be and the story that you keep telling yourself about why you can't have it or how this whatever it is decide what you're going to leave in 2013 and don't bring it into 2014 that is our wish for you happy 2014 bye bye